Armando Hosurungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hosurungan. In this video, we're going to look at hormones produced by the, the kidneys, essentially. So it's re we're looking at renal hormones. And there are three main hormones. So before we start, let's just look at the ana just some anatomy. So here we have the two kidneys. The left kidney is slightly higher than the right. Here we have the inferior... Uh, vena cava, which sort of uh, where the renal veins drain into, and then you have the descending aorta, the abdominal aorta, which supplies the kidneys with blood. And then coming off the kidneys, you have the ureter, uh, where urine will then uh, be stored in the urinary bladder here. Now above the kidneys, you have glands known as adrenal glands, and above the right kidney, you have the liver, and above the liver, essentially, and above everything else, you have the diaphragm, which separates the thoracic cavity with the abdominal cavity. So that was a quickly, uh, that was a quick brief look at the, some general structures. And here I'm drawing just a, a blood vessel, which will represent the blood, essentially, what we find in the blood. And here I'm drawing the bone. Now, why I'm drawing the bone? Because it will relate to one of the renal hormones. Within the bone, uh, in the bone, uh, actually looking at the bone marrow, we have stem cells which can give rise to red blood cells through a process. Now, during periods of uh, hypoxia or where we have a decrease in partial pressure of oxygen, the kidneys will begin producing erythropoietin. So a decrease in oxygen essentially will stimulate the kidneys to produce erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone which stimulates erythropoiesis, which is the essentially the production of red blood cells so it will stimulate the stem cells to produce red blood cells and so with a lot of red blood cells being produced this will increase oxygen carrying capacity so thereby trying to replenish the diminished oxygen uh, we have in our body so that was one hormone the second hormone is produced when we have a decrease in blood pressure when there's a decrease in blood pressure a few signals will tell the kidneys to produce an enzyme known as renin. So renin is not actually a hormone, but it will relate to uh, some hormones. So renin is an enzyme which will convert a molecule called angiotensinogen, which is normally produced by the liver. And angiotensinogen, angiotensinogen just circulates in the blood. Well, renin will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is not very, uh, uh, not very, I guess, potent, but when angiotensin 1 travels to the lungs, it will encounter an enzyme called ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. So ACE will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a very potent um, hormone which increases blood pressure through several mechanisms. So this is the other important hormone. Now, the third hormone that, uh, that is produced uh, or actually activated by the kidneys um, relates to calcium and phosphate levels in the blood. I'm introducing another endocrine gland here known as the parathyroid gland because it will relate to um, this renal hormone I'm talking about. So the parathyroid glands are endocrine glands. Uh, we have four of them, and they're located on the dorsal side, the back of our thyroid gland, which is in the throat area. So in periods where we have a decrease in ca plasma calcium, so when we have like low calcium levels in the blood, the parathyroid gland will produce parathyroid hormone. So parathyroid hormone... Um, will do something. So let's just pause there and introduce the liver. So let's just introduce the liver now, which actually produces a pre-hormone you can say called calcidiol. Now calcidiol actually originates from the skin, but then it travels to the liver where it actually becomes calcidiol. And calcidiol then travels uh, from the liver via blood to the kidneys, where the kidneys will convert calcidiol to the active form calcitriol. 
And parathyroid hormone actually stimulates this process of the conversion from calcidiol to calcitriol. So what is calcitriol? Well, calcitriol is actually the active form of vitamin D. So calcitriol has many effects in the, in the body. It targets uh, a few things. For example, it targets the intestine, the bone, as well as the immune system. In the intestine, calcitriol will increase the absorption of calcium and phosphate. In the bone, it will increase bone reabsorption, resorption actually, by inc uh, and therefore increasing calcium and phosphate levels. Calcitriol also affects the immune system and induces immune cell differentiation. But uh, calcitriol actually also affects the kidneys itself by um, increasing the reabsorption of calcium from the nephrons. So as you can see, the main goal of calcitriol is to in increase essentially calcium levels in the, in the blood. And, um, and this is uh, supported by parathyroid hormone. So I hope that made sense. So there, those are the three important hormones, uh, actually two important hormones and one enzyme, which is erythropoietin, uh, renin, and calcitriol. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching.